These are the Quixels 3D pixels. I found these when I was browsing Toy World. Okay, I know I said this channel is not a kid's channel, and it's not. I have a beard. That's how you can tell. <laughs> but I saw these a couple of months ago, and I was so, like, curious. So, naturally, I bought all the stock they had, which is lucky because this as a product is discontinued. Then I found out that you need the maker to do anything with. <laughs> So then I went on eBay and I found the maker. This is the Quixels 3D maker. Cubes that join with water. How much water? I don't know. How this works? I don't know. So these are all my Quixels. And then this is the maker. I have no idea how it makes things, but we're going to explore that in a moment. First, I need to divide all these into colors. All right, whenever there's something time consuming, that I just want to lose my brain in. I chuck on an audio book. Send online book two, let's go. Standing on two clawed feet with a massive tail sweeping the ground behind it, a sleek black scale devil. All right, after all that, it's incredibly disappointing what I end up with. These packets cost me $12 each, $60 on the, the pixels themselves, and $70 on the machine. The $130. I thought perhaps unreasonably, because I don't read things, that it would just be like a mix of all the different colors and I can make whatever I want, but no. You can only make exactly what they give you the quixels to make. I got like 12 blue bits. Okay, what can I make? I'll start off with one of those stupid designs. There's a chick, the chicken looks all right. I'll do the chicken. $130. <laughs> oh no. One, flip handle over and insert template under the window. The chicken goes in here. Flip this back to the build position. All right, there's me. I think that's my first layer. Using the brush, apply four to five coats of water. Flip the handle over to eject the finished layer. Now I've got my next step. So let's just do that to do all the other steps. I knocked my chicken. I ruined it. All right. Chunk. And then just don't move. All right. Satisfying montage, let's go. Layer by layer, I made my chicken. One tiny 3D pixel, or voxel, I guess, at a time. Now, this is fun to watch. I enjoy watching it, it's cool. It's not so fun to do. Each layer took me, I mean, say 10 minutes or so, and with five to six layers for most of these, well, that's an hour to painstakingly make a tiny 3D model. But I let myself just zone out and slowly piece them together. Let dry for at least one hour. <sighs> All right, I'll tuck that aside. I've got one more tray. I was gonna do like a test to see what the parameters are height wise, to see how big and, and adventurous I can get with my quick art. I'll do that with these things. That way I don't have to wait for anything to dry. One, two, three, four, five, five six, seven. Seven? Is that my limit? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make one something cool on this tray. By the time I'm done with that, we'll come back, reveal the chicken, put the other one aside, and then use this platform. This is gonna be a very time consuming process, and normally I would be very daunted if I didn't have audiobooks to listen to. So I am extremely glad this video is sponsored by Audible. If you haven't checked out Audible, do yourself a favor and go check it out. I just finished the first three Horace Heresy book series. Really intense, really dramatic, really fun. And then I felt like something a bit lighthearted, and I'm on book two of Ascend Online, which is like if Sword Art Online and Ready Player One had a baby, it's really fun. Not only do they have the biggest selection of audiobooks available anywhere, but it goes a lot beyond that. There's podcasts, there's theatrical programs, A-list comedy, and Audible originals that you won't find anywhere else. Access to daily news digests from the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal and the Washington Post, and guided meditation programs. It's a lot more than just audiobooks, but 
is a lot of audiobooks. As a member of Audible, you get one credit every month to pick any title you want to listen to, as well as access to two Audible originals from a monthly selection. Go to audible.com slash jazza, or if you're in the US, you can text jazza to 500, 500 and get started today with your first free audiobook and access to a huge selection of Audible originals. Huge thank you to Audible, of course, for sponsoring this video and saving my sanity in the coming hours. I have no idea what I have. I know I have seven layers to work with. How many layers is this? One, two, six. So it's not going to be much higher than that. It's only seven high if I do a character that's upright that way. If I do one who's forward facing, then I can do 11 high. Let's do that. I don't know if it'll work or not, but I'm going to give it a go. So once again, I started laying out all my pieces on the little machine, but this time I had no guide to go off of. Now this wouldn't be so bad if I had a reference or a plan, which of course, I didn't, and early on I decided I was going about it backwards, that by building the top layer first it would end up with the on the bottom and have the holes facing the front, so I started again and built it in reverse so the holes would be facing away. The only problem is I was right the first time, so I corrected myself to then create my entire model the wrong way around. So enjoy watching the next few seconds of stylish time lapse pass by knowing that it's a, a couple of hours of doing something the wrong way. Kinesthetically. <laughs> took longer than expected. This is in theory gonna be the Jazza avatar when it dries. I did it the wrong way, so all the holes are facing the front, but that's okay, this is the one I've learned from. But I've also learned that doing organic shapes like people is pretty difficult and I have no flesh tone left anyway. But halfway through this one, I sort of thought structures would make the most sense. So instead of doing one big epic and difficult uh, artwork, after this one. I'm gonna go about making a lot. I'm gonna make a tiny medieval village maybe with some trees and props and little things like that and we'll see how cute and cool I can make something like that and I think it's gonna be way more straightforward as well which I'm gonna be honest it's pretty difficult and there is a ratio of pain to gain. So I'm gonna dive into this and make it as cool as I can to justify the tedium of doing it. <laughs> Let's hopefully motivate ourselves by pulling apart our little chicken. So my structure's falling apart. Chicken's holding up so far. It's pretty cute. It's not bad. I'm gonna put in the work and I'm gonna see how cute and fun I can make a little medieval village. Let's go. All right, I've learned from my first two projects and I wanna make the last project as cool as it can be, no matter how much time or frustration it takes. So this time I made a plan. I drew out on grid lined paper the ideas for the parts that would make up my medieval village. I really should have done this the first time. I referred to them the whole time and by planning them out like this, it made it really clear where the support blocks should go, what direction I should build in and how much room I had to work with. Now with my first part finished, I knew I needed a system for removing the still yet to dry pieces so that I could keep the build trays rotating and make more than two total pieces. Now I managed to successfully remove it with a piece of card underneath and I moved it to a turntable with a hairdryer blowing on it, which I added the models to one at a time as I finished them so they would dry a little faster and fairly evenly. And thus I proceeded to build the rest of my teeny medieval pixel village one piece at a time. The last prop would be a teeny little flag to put on top of the castle. And like the small tree trunk, I super glued the blocks together to make a more durable row of single blocks so this could, you know, actually stand up. 
And with that done, I put it aside to dry and cross my fingers that this would be as cool as I hoped it would be. All right, time for a bunch of reveals. Starting off with my not very well thought out or planned Jazza avatar. By the way, this has had overnight to dry. It's had longer than an hour and it feels <laughs> pretty flimsy. These bits are uh, barely holding on there, which is funny because they come with these extra little pieces. I'll put one aside here so that in theory, you can stick that on there. And that's what these little thingies are for, the string and these little hooks. You're meant to be able to stick that in there, glue that there or whatever, and then thread it. And then it's like a bag tag or something, but you know, that's not gonna last. <laughs> and on top of that, these are obviously not waterproof because they turn into a glue when they're wet. I'm gonna do an experiment. I don't know what the results are as I'm saying this, but I'm gonna film a time-lapse grabbing just a bunch of these colors. I'm just gonna put them all into a little shot glass of water and leave them overnight with the GoPro filming them. I'll show you the footage of that right now just to see how these things fare in liquid or being wet for a long period of time. Also this artwork would be great if, <laughs> if I did it facing the right way. It's actually not bad. It's pretty cool, all things considered, especially from the back. <laughs> That looks like a proper Jazza Avatar head from behind. So this was my test. Again, flimsy. It's already feeling like it's gonna fall apart. If I flex the whole thing in the greater uh, mass of the structure, it's actually quite strong. So maybe the solution is to use more water or to add a little bit of glue after, I don't know. Now the moment you've all been waiting for, my little medieval village. I'll pull these apart one by one, shall I? Let's start off with the first thing I made and the biggest thing the tower and it's a pretty straightforward structure feels pretty solid and it looks pretty cute i don't mind that look at that little tower Ooh. now i made another little tower because in theory my thought was you could make a little modular system where you can have one tower on its own or you can stack it and that looks pretty cool all right you're convincing me. So I've also got this little modular piece here when I break the supports out. The idea is if you build more tower parts, this could be like a little wall. That that works pretty well. Okay, I'd say that's, that's a success for my little modular castle system. All right, moving on. We have my little house. This is meant to look like a thatched roof house. Oh, hey, that pulled apart pretty nicely and that works pretty well. That's pretty cute. All right, so I guess if you're making the right thing, they can be pretty adorable. I'll give them that. And I begrudgingly admit, even though it is very time consuming, when I do zone out and stop like worrying about getting something done in a certain amount of time, it's less of an art activity and more of a puzzle. And there is an appeal to that. So we have a few extra little props here. This is just my little tree. That looks pretty cute. I don't know if it stands up. <laughs> nope, might need blue tack. I got a bigger tree. Whoa, okay, pretty cool. There you go. Does that one stand up? Yes. Okay. All right, this is meant to be a little uh, cart. So let's see if it looks like that when I pull the supports away. There you go, That's, that works! Again, when it works, it's a, it's pretty adorable. And look at that, it rests on a little, little angle there. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> and last but not least, I have a flag for the top of my castle. Now, I don't think this is gonna stand up, but I'm just gonna glue this to my castle. I am very happy with how all of these turned out. But I think to really bring them all together, I'm gonna take some of this grid paper that I used to do my designs with. I'm gonna add a little bit of color to the base and uh, build a little village around it. There it is, the result of two days of using this thing. <sighs> Which brings me to my conclusion. Would I ever do this again or recommend that you give it a go? 
No, because I, I can't, they're out of manufacture. They don't make them anymore or sell them anymore. But am I glad I did it just to see how it, it's done? Yeah, it's pretty cute. I like it and it's cool. And I hope you're as satisfied with the final outcome as I am. It's pretty adorable. And if you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more fun with art and creativity if you haven't. Whether they're mediums we're gonna come back to or dive into deeper or not, at the end of the day, it's about biting off more than I can chew and trying to make something really enjoyable as the end result. And I really hope that you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and coming along with this journey with me. <laughs> there are more videos over there you're bound to enjoy. If you enjoyed this one, I'll put the bead one there because, you know, similar effect. If you liked this, you'll like that. Otherwise, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'll see you later.